I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed <laughs> Breaking News. Since we do two podcasts in one sitting, you good, Al. Breaking news. Good. I was corrected. I was chastised <laughs> after the first <laughs> podcast because I gave some riveting information on how to make an ice hole when you're duck hunting. And Zach, after it was over, was like, yeah, that was real good. You know, it's first ever, but uh, wouldn't that be a water hole? Yeah. I mean, that, it's, a, it's a fair point. <laughs> Although, I will say, <laughs> is that your crickets? <laughs> that's the new and improved crickets from our young oh, friend. That's the one from our, okay. From, uh, well, we're making use of it. I'm just saying, it's, a, it's water in the hole, not ice. It's surrounded by ice, but I did look it up. So in ice fishing, they call it an ice hole. So, thank you. You are you are correct. <laughs> so that chastisement so, was uh, unwarranted. Yeah. We have more breaking news. We have rescinded the rebuke. I was just yes, going to tell you what corrected. it's called. I didn't say it was accurate. Uh, you know, on that note, Jep called me last night. So by the time this episode is aired. Because there's a two or three, four day window. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, a few days. A few days. But he's like, dude, I need to be on your podcast. And uh, Jep's noticeably absent today because I, I went ahead and, and ran a little blocking just to see if this was podcast worthy, whatever he was going to say. He's like, you're not going to believe this. What? He said, my wife. And I was like, is she coming too? And he's like, yeah, you're not going to believe this. He said, we're watching a football game, which I slept through because it's duck season. It was the Chiefs playing the Bills. Mm -hmm. And he said, I mean, Jessica's like, this thing, this NFL's rigged. And Jeff's like, what are you talking about? So she said, well, the Buffalo Bills kicker missed that field goal because the powers that be – they want all the Swifties <laughs> to be in the Super Bowl. <laughs> hmm. And I was like waiting for the rest of the story. And I was like, you want to come on the podcast <laughs> and tell us that? He's like, no, she really believes that. Well, that's taking conspiracy theories to a <laughs> new level right there. <laughs> I said, Jeff, I'm not sure that's podcast worry <laughs> Worthy, but I'll tell you this. I'll share that story with you because Missy. I never thought that. In fact, I was just the opposite. I thought Taylor Swift is doing such harm because people are now going to hate the Chiefs because of Taylor Swift. Here's what's funny. The only reason I bring this up is because as soon as I hung up the phone, because I always talk to people on speakerphone, Missy said, oh, no, she's exactly right. That's the same thing I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought maybe it's a woman thing. <laughs> well, no, but it's funny that all the women in my house. I didn't know whether the Chiefs had won or not. They won the last game. Yeah, they won, uh, and it was on they a missed field goal that was a big part of it. The Jason's time, and it was a bad miss, which I actually thought about Missy because she, she's the one that keeps. Well, that's saying, what she said. She said these look, kickers. Look what Maddie said. <laughs> Oh no! Our female <laughs> board runner just said. Our a producer text. just said, "I think it's true too." She gave us a message. <laughs> so, but now look, the women in my house. Now they didn't say that, but I'm always watching football, and they don't really watch it. But because it's on, they can't help it because I'm not going. I'm going to watch it. But they're all like, Ugh, "I'm so sick of this Taylor Swift stuff." So it's like. The women in my house, my granddaughters and all that, they're like they're like down on it. They're, I guess they're yeah. not fans. I don't know. I can't quite figure it out. So, but they do show Taylor Swift every five minutes. The connective tissue. everything that happens t with the Chiefs, it goes to her booth. And yesterday, her <laughs> she looked like she's lovey dovey, no matter who's in the booth. Well, right. And yesterday, his brother was in the booth without a shirt on, <laughs> which. <laughs> Yeah, no, not did. her yeah, brother. That his was, brother. Yeah, Kelsey's. His brother. Because he's retired yeah. now. He's back there chugging beers without a shirt. He looked like he should be in the stands. Because <laughs> he's a beast himself. Well, he's a big beast. Know. But if you're doing that, if I were her, you know, because usually you think long term here, 
this is what's happening in public. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> on camera. <laughs> so, yeah. well, we live in such a digital age, and now everybody just wants some kind of viral image of the year. Well, I will agree that, Jason. And, uh, and, and the women are right in the sense that the NFL is loving it because their numbers are up because yeah. of this yeah. chief thing. Well, it's because, you know, it's probably more people follow Jesus. But Taylor Swift's probably in the top ten. Yeah. I mean, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, Jesus, Muhammad, probably Taylor Swift. <laughs> She's up there. The woman made a billion dollars last year. So Well, I will go on record. I've shared the story a couple times, so I won't do it again because, you know, at some point you just got to move on. But I had a conversation with Taylor Swift and uh What you said was you were you found yourself alone in a green room with Taylor Swift. Well, we wasn't even in the green room. They had a break in the show, whatever it was, the yeah, country but- music awards and they were honoring her and everybody got up because they had all the people who were supposed to be in the right front row seats there we were roped off from the public and everybody got up and started mingling about except me and her so i guess that says something about we do have that in common <laughs> that people you would mingling. just rather not mingle with us and so uh you know we had a short brief conversation but i will go on record is saying I had a conversation with her and I didn't know what her name was. <laughs> and she didn't know what your name was. And she didn't know what my name was. So we have more in common. Than I that. just remember when you told that story before, I said that will never happen again. You will never find yourself alone. With Taylor no. Swift. And my wife <laughs> said. be big bodyguards around now. Said, said, I saw you talking to Taylor Swift. And I said, no, I was talking to a girl. Because I just thought the name Taylor. I said, no, you must have. <laughs> She's like, no, that's her name. You said, wasn't that the guy on Twilight? <laughs> yeah. I, I said, oh, that, what does she do? And Missy said, she's a singer. She, she's pretty good. I mean, Missy was like, yeah, she's quite popular. I was like, oh. She's like, well, and then what? She, and then she said, and one day she's going to rig the NFL. Watch that girl. <laughs> the now, NFL will yeah. be get, sending messages down to the kicker of the opposing team and said, make sure you shank this one to the right. Well, here's what's yeah. funny. Missy said, what did y'all talk about? I said, I'm not real sure. <laughs> <laughs> she said, were you listening? I said, I was. I just wasn't following. That's what's funny, Jace, is Missy would have loved to have had that conversation. Yeah, it was weird. And cherished it. And you're like, I don't even know. I think everybody you know, had their friends there. and they When we had the break, you know, everybody went to people that they knew. Yeah. But I didn't know anybody. Or I just couldn't remember who I knew. Yeah. And uh, look, I have ADD. But what is it about? I'll ask y'all this because, Dad, it, this started actually in your era. What is it about every generation or so there comes along a musical act? You know, that's what it is. It's a person, but it's an act. It's just idle. Just Al, we captivates want... a planet. Like, I mean, you had Elvis, you had the Beatles. That, that's and... what the appeal of social media is. We love to elevate human beings. Yeah. But there is a point you Remember reach. Remember when it was Michael Jackson? I know, mean, there's a point you reach where you're too big. They get so big and so alone that it's unsustainable. And then bad and, things. So I'm kind of glad to see her you know, mucking it up with people because you don't want to be alone. That's They get so famous. Yeah, you're right. If anymore. you get out by yourself, next thing we know, it's you're 50 years old and you're dying of a drug You're, you're dead. Yeah. You, you can't well, function. They all die of drug overdose. Almost every I mean, one of them I, do. I mean, but you know, I think the Taylor thing is interesting to me. It's like the, uh, for a moment there, it was like, if you weren't, if you were a female and you weren't at her concert and you'd have, and you didn't have documentation on social media to your point, Jason, you were not, you weren't, you weren't hip enough. You know, it, it was kind of like these, um, have y'all seen these, these Stanley mugs? They're like, a. I, I saw mean, this story it, I, a couple of weeks ago. I mean, I noticed these. I was in Dallas probably about six months ago. I, I have a, a couple restaurant. at my house, but they're but they. Oh, it's a thing. But if you don't have one, if you're a female and you don't have a Stanley Cup, a pink one, it's got to be then, pink, right? No, nah, they got all colors now. Oh, like it's, it's all go. colors. <laughs> but I'm sitting there at a restaurant with Jill, and I look up at this table. See, look, Dad has look, a Stanley thermos. I'm more of a Yeti well, man. Well, you have a Stanley well, thermos. This, You've had one for years. Yeah. 
So, Dad, Dude, you are way you ahead of the you something. That's the hottest. That's the hottest thing now is the, but it's but it's the deal. If you don't have it, then you it, it's a. But the, that started it's, it's, on social media. Is that what you're telling me? I don't know where it started. I just I just well, I've looked seen up pictures of them. They wait ago. outside in lines and they open up the Target or whatever it is, and they come running in, and they grab them all up, and within thirty seconds, everything they had out is gone, and they're all Stanley. Well, Cups. somebody was explaining to me that however many likes, hits, views, that translates to money now on some of these social. Oh, media these platforms. influencers they call them. Yeah, they make a they make a lot of money just because they say they. Somebody probably that's why that started. That somebody probably said, "Oh, I love my pink stand." It was probably a big influence. Well, it's not just that they try to get you know a cat to go you know, jump over a cliff and survive or, you know, maybe not that morbid, but I was just, <laughs> you know, they, they, yeah. they try to go out there and, uh, they're doing uh, these videos, crazy viral. Somebody videos. showed me one, uh, at a card game the other night, uh, a young boy, pretty young. He, and it definitely wasn't in Louisiana cause you would never want to do this, but he stuck his hand in, in the water. It would look like a pond. And he started twitching his finger. And all of a sudden, boom, he pulled out a four-pound bass. He that he was twitching his finger like it was a, a bait, a lure. A bait, yeah. And that, in one sweeping motion, that bass attacked his finger, and he thumbed the mouth, the bottom. And pulled him out. And pulled him out. He caught and him back. Boy, hand. they were hooping and hollering, you know. And, yeah. Which and I said, where'd you, where'd, where'd, I thought it was like his cousin or something. Yeah. You know, he's like, no, I got whatever social media I can't even remember. On the internet. He, said. he said, oh, yeah, no, I just, I was, what did he say he was doing? Scanning the something. Uh, he called it some phrase it surfing like, the, surfing the, the web the, or scanning the, home, the web, scanning the, the home page or something. <laughs> <laughs> and, scrolling. Well, the, and he said they, man, it tells what it is. He said the most important. Or not the most, but he said the most viral things just run on a feed. He was explaining this to me. And I said, well, sum it up. I mean, what what is happening in America? And he's like, well, about one out of every 10 is something Donald Trump did. Yeah, that's... <laughs> and then he's like, then there's usually two or three fights in, in the team. There's some scrap somebody like filmed, a brawl, somebody, you know, yeah. and then he said, then there's some woman shaking her booty or whatever. I was like, well, okay. And, uh, he said, then there's something outdoors, you know, and then there's a car wreck or, or some, something, somebody captured. And I was like, you mentioned the people that falling down because when Lisa gets a hold of them, I can hear her in the other part of the house cackling. And I go in there and every time it's the same thing, she's watching a series of people that are having a bunch of unfortunate falls. I mean, you know, slipping on and the she ice. Oh, this she, is my point. She, la- she oh. is entertained. She can, if they was on for hours, she would watch it for hours and never stop but laughing. This is my point. If the Lord, I mean, if the, the world. Realizing. <laughs> that's what you're missing, Dad. Well, I'm what fixed I'm to make the point, Phil. If the, if you can't, I mean, because he said, that's it. He said, they run that 24-7. Okay. And I said, if the world it doesn't need a savior based on what I just heard there. If that's what we're doing all day, I mean, mm. that's just we're not a whole lot. So I was asked if I had any insights on liver and I searched my brain and realized that I have one <laughs> and I would probably be better off if it was healthy. <laughs> That's true. You do have one. Uh, and it is important that your liver is healthy. You think about it, everything gets thrown at your liver, Jays. Um, you know, it's kind of the filter of your body. Cholesterol, alcohol, toxins, Tylenol, statins, cigarettes. And there's a lot of things out there that the liver is trying to help process. Which is pretty simple. You need one. You need one. Well, a lot of those things, Al, would not apply to me. Yeah, they're not too good for you. Thank you very much. But but that helps. I will say this. I've actually never seen my liver, but a lot like Jesus in the Bible, I know it to be true. (laughs) Because you're functioning, right? It's there. Well, the American Heart Association tells us that adults with what they call fatty liver, 
That's what happens. These toxins, all these things put this fat in the liver. Three and a half times more likely to have heart failure. And 100 million Americans have fatty liver. So you can usually tell when you go and get a blood work done, and they tell from your liver enzymes. Uh, your liver helps you with over 500 key functions every day. So you want to help your liver. And we have a solution for you. It's a product that I take. Uh, it's been great for me. It's got my numbers back in line. It's called Liver Health Formula. And you get it at GetLiverHelp.com. It's all natural. Contains uh, 11 proven botanicals uh, that help recharge and protect your liver. Uh, it's all clinical studies, so it's very well done. Uh, you, If you're looking to ignite your fat-burning metabolism, boost your energy, transform how you feel and look, Try Liver Health Formula. You're going to receive a free bottle of blood sugar formula, which helps you reduce the sugar cravings when you order today. So try Liver Health Formula by going to GetLiverHelp.com slash unashamed to get that free bonus gift. That's GetLiverHelp.com slash unashamed. So I told this story a long time ago with Jay. So I got on a plane one time. I sat down. There was a young man sitting next to me because Lisa wasn't sitting next to me. And I just glanced over because he had his phone, but he seemed really intense. And so I just, you know, looked, at, at, eavesdropped, I guess, on what he was watching. And it was video. It was, And he watched them the entire flight. It was cats. Like they'd be playing with a ball of yarn. Oh, that's a big and deal. And there was cats another a, where the cat's jumping off. And, there's, and yeah, it, it wasn't the same video. It was deal. a series of videos. This young man watched it for about an hour and a half. One video of kittens and cats after the other. Because I kept looking over and I thought, well, surely he's going to move on to something beyond the cats. Nope. He stayed with the cats. He stayed with the cats. I didn't even know what it meant. I was uh, over at my sister's house last week, and they they put the social media on the TV. They, they uh, cast it onto the TV to watch videos of people falling. Um, and somehow we got footage of so you're watching this your, as your TV now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're watching this TV, but we had one of the one of the footage, uh, one of the clips we had that uh, Ben had was of your security camera at your house, Al, <laughs> and it's your daughter, oh. Alex, and I'd never seen it. <laughs> it took her <laughs> three minutes to pop. Uh, I mean, she <laughs> fell and crawled around on all fours for probably it, I, it was I, two or I three minutes. Been, Oh, and I mean, she, I'm not going to say what I, what she was saying. But she <laughs> there was, was, there no, was some just, exclamation. There were some choice words. They were, it was the same word repeated about 15 times. <laughs> then I heard a, a, a moaning and I mean, it, I was like, and she actually course, twisted it, her ankle. Well, what's funny about that story is that, so she, we were in the kitchen. We're all talking Well, she had her hands full of stuff. She walks out and closes the door. So we're standing just on the other side of the door. And we didn't even hear any of that, which I was shocked. How could we not hear it? And she stepped off wrong, twisted her ankle, and stuff is flying in every direction because she's got her hands full of stuff. And she's rolling over, stumbling down the steps. And then she, she about 20 minutes later, she texts us back. She said, have you looked at your security camera? She thought we heard it. And I was like, no. And she said, you need to look at it. She knew there was a camera outside the door. See, that's the problem. So, look, yesterday, y'all didn't even know this happened. Because, you know, I don't, I, every time something happens in my life, I don't say, ooh, let me get a camera out. <laughs> so, yesterday, I was going to put the decoy. <laughs> but I know people who do that, Jay. <laughs> you know, I, I've, I've turned into kind of, yeah, I'm kind of a chauffeur. I got Phil. And uh, who who else was in that? Maybe maybe Jersey Joe. I got I dumped them off in the blind, and the other three guys that are with us they had to walk because we only had one vehicle that would get to the blind, which is an Argo, and I have it. We have three of them, but only one is running. And so I grabbed the decoys because I got to go park that and walk back. But I thought I'll get the decoys ready for them. But I got them all because I didn't want to make two trips while Phil and uh, I think it may have been Burley. They were putting their stuff in the blind, all the gear. And so I got all these decoys and it, there's ice. Yep. So I'm, but the ice is breaking every time I step. But still, 
And I got a lot of clothes on because it's cold. It's 23 degrees. Oh. And most of the place was frozen except right in front of the blind. Remember that when we went to the north end of the privet hole is what, what we call it. And so what I didn't account for is those beavers have a runway to the blind because when we're not in the blind, they live there. <laughs> and so they made them a little underground trail. But if you've ever stepped in a beaver run, it's real slick. And I'm telling you, it was uncontrollable. As soon as my foot hit the edge of that, my right shoulder went to where my foot was supposed to be. And I just threw the ice, right? Water, I felt it come up to my shoulder. But what happened was I had put my outer jacket on top of my waders, and it created an air pocket. Now, this all happened in two seconds. <laughs> So when my head and shoulder went under the water, I mean, to all the way to the bottom, I just exploded backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I just come firing out of the ice and water and landed on my feet. Should have filmed it, dude. Oh, that's that's. And I looked around to see yeah, if anybody that. saw that. <laughs> because I, I you just jettisoned out of the water. I did. It looked supernatural yeah it was awesome that would have gone viral and if look, you could have got that that could have been the one to, to take you over the edge jace you yeah. been famous on that and so then later on that day i was chasing down a duck i was on a dead run i'm running in ankle deep water and i hit a i'm assuming a beaver hole and the only thing that kept me from going out of sight was my hip because <laughs> my right foot hit and I just, I just stopped right there. Just human peg, leg all the way down, stuck. And it probably took me three to five minutes yeah. to get out. I thought, for, for a couple of moments, I thought, I'm going to have to holler and get someone to pry me out of the ground. It was just a hole. I've and, seen that air pocket before. When, we, when Dad baptized our old friend Kenny Moore down here, it was cold. So we put some waders on him. Dad had waiters, and we put waiters on Kitty because it was super cold. And when when Dad baptized him, he took him down. But what happened was those waiters, there was air in them, mm -hmm. but his upper body went under the water. Well, his feet in that air pocket just shot up out of the water. So he literally went like this, whoop, and then he just his feet kicked up, and he came up like gasping, looking around. So that was we exactly should do that every was. time. That's right. It looked like a supernatural. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, hey, the guy, we got a lot of charismatic listeners. Put that into your repertoire. That's right. Air pocket mm -hmm. baptism. That'd be pretty cool. So Cold I'm not plunge. sure where we were going with that. Well, we were talking about viral videos, and that could have been one. Yeah. If Zach had been there, he would have been videoing you. Or oh, you I would have got it on video. And then they would have got it on video. You'd be in right one of these loop streams. Yeah. My, big, my big question is, though, how, what, how does a video of your daughter on your porch in agony, how does that make it onto the open market where, where I'm looking at it? I'm just curious. What was the, I don't know how you even got it. Cause it's you not like a, we, we didn't post it on. Did you get a check for that? I didn't get a check, but it should be. It's at my house. That's my, that's my set. That's uh, I think we should ask Alex if we can post a small <laughs> edited, we better, uh, Maddie better get a beep this. on there, though. Yeah. We'll, Since it's going to be on under shed. We'll have to ask about it. That's pretty good. All right, which, brings us to the, which brings us to the book of Luke. Yeah, let's get to the book of Luke. Let's take a break. So we're in Luke is where we are. Um, we were right in the middle uh, before we went to overtime last time of that text that Jesus is arrested. And we were talking about, we kind of got off, we chased a rabbit on the idea of how much these guys missed the kingdom in the moment because they still kind of were rallying to this place that those two swords they had, along with the power of Jesus, was going to be enough to first, I guess, overpower this mob that had come out to get him and then eventually would take over the Roman Empire. I mean, is that where we kind of left off, Jason? The it was. And, you know, Jesus had just kind of prepared them that he was going away and that their lifestyle without him would be difficult. Yep. Back when he said, 
you know, there was a time I told you not to take anything, but now you need to prepare yourself. And they thought, oh, we're fixed to go to war. They had two swords. Peter cuts off one of the soldier's ears. Jesus healed him. And then in 51, Jesus answered, no more of this. And he's, you know, he said that because got an exclamation point pretty forcefully, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is not wrong, wrong kingdom. Wrong kingdom. This will not, the weapons we fight with, well, that's what Paul would later say, but, but which is a great text. The weapons we fight with are not the way of the world. And so in the overtime, I went off on a little spiel. Uh, Zach had brought up N.T. Wright, and he wrote a book that I haven't read, but I read just kind of the title. And uh, it's called Broken Signposts. And he basically had seven themes, justice, love, spirituality, beauty, freedom, truth, and power. And he basically, his point is the idea of broken signposts, that all seven of those things did not really happen they were all, you can see the brokenness of all those things that led Jesus to the cross. Yeah. And he was making the same point I was in the overtime that God came at our worst. That, that's why he came to die for us. Uh, he was lied about. He was insulted. He was persecuted. He was obviously not free to do whatever he wanted to. There was this conversation about truth there was an ugliness about it. There was an injustice about it. Wasn't nobody loving Jesus in the moment, even his followers scattered. Yeah. And so that that was his point. There, there's a power that's an upside down power that Jesus was illustrating what he came to do to represent not only the kingdom, but him as king, taking the sins of the world on his back and destroying the powers of the evil dark world and then ultimately death itself through the resurrection. So I, I really think he's on to something there. And I think that's what separates Jesus from everybody else. I mean, we're talking about going viral. I mean, <laughs> Jesus represented something that no one else has ever tried, thought about, or pulled off. Yeah. It just basically what you think of power, he did the exact opposite and became the most viral figure ever in the history of the world. Can you imagine there had been cell phones when Jesus was here? Oh, my goodness. Because, you know, and all the stuff he, he did that we read about. I mean, you tell, the man was a walking viral video because everything he did amazed people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it would have been amazing. But that's why he chose the time he chose. He didn't come during our time. Well, and faith comes in there, you know, being sure ho- right. what we hope for and certain of what we don't see and trust. It, you know, it's like, it, I, I come back to that first John 5, you know, when he says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of Jesus so that you'll know that you have eternal life. Once you get to know Jesus, that was the trigger for me to know that this was real. I mean, there was no other explanation. I, I didn't need proof. I just read this and thought, oh, no, he's he's legit. It, it, it's just the same thing about creation, even with looking at the details. If you're a hunter or a fisherman or outdoorsman or environmentalist, I just don't see if you stack up all the details of life, it has to lead you to some life-giving force. There's too many details here. From how many feathers are on a duck to the different colors to, you know, we we shot a wood duck this year that had 50 acorns not chewed up. They just eat the whole acorn in his crawl. And they were eggs inside a hollow tree on how they got here. Their mother laid eggs 10 foot from a hole about like this, a little bitty hole. But the duck, the female duck, He's flying along and just disappeared. You walk over in a little hole right there. Yeah. Well, the eggs may be down there six, eight foot, ten foot. They crawl back out once they come out of the egg, jump out of the hole, <laughs> bounce on the ground two or three times, and Mother Wood Duck gets up there and herds them up, and they walk down to the slough, the, the yeah. body of water, and swim away, raised in a hole in a tree, a duck. 
and then they're going to eat acorns that fall from said tree. And we're going to eat can them. Put, just think a jawbreaker. I mean, we're a lot bigger than a duck. Yeah. Try swallowing 54 acorns. I'm sure you could do it, but for a duck and its size, how in the world are you going to digest that and live? <laughs> That's a lot of ac acorns. They're cheering all of them in their crop. They're in their throat. We feel yeah. that we we feel that with our hand. We say, yeah, full of acorns. That's gonna be good. I only tell that story because I was telling somebody that the other day. They were seeing mallards because it was frozen. Walk along the bank and eat acorns, and we see that very seldom. They got to be pretty hungry. And they were like, I just never thought they could eat an acorn. And I said, Yeah, we shot a wood duck that had fifty. And they said, That's impossible. I was like, what do you mean it's impossible? I saw it. We cleaned the bird. And they still didn't believe me, which which we're getting back to faith here. I yeah. mean, I was an eyewitness <laughs> to it, and the guy said, I don't believe you. <laughs> that that did not happen. Yeah. Well, they were like, how could you even digest 50 acorns? They were like, they weren't. They come out of holes in the, in the trees. It's yeah. the only place of wood duck I've ever seen one. Yeah, well, I finally got mad and said, well, that's the way God made them. <laughs> but you're right, Jazz. You make a good point. The same thing that brought doubt in Jesus' day, because you remember the the guards, they came out with a story. They knew that something amazing happened because there was angels there. All this stuff happened. They froze and saw this celestial being, and they made up a story that his followers came and, and stole him. So they lied about it even back then. It's the same thing you see today. Now you got AI. I mean, there are movies now where actors who have died – or in the movie, they just come up with an avatar that looks like them, and they're delivering lines. You're watching the movie. You thought, I thought that old gal died last year. She did, but she's in the movie like she's still living. Yeah. So you know the evil one. Uh, we up. were asking the AI, the AI the other night. The kids had a computer, and they were like, "Is there anything you want to ask?" Because they were asking the art artificial intelligence. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, ask them if the Bible's true. And so they put it in and they came out. It was three paragraphs, what what the artificial intelligence. And I was kind of surprised. It was more positive than you would think. They'd yeah. say a lot of people believe it, trust it can change your life. You know, there was there was a lot of so it just Good wasn't thing. a one word no. Or, yeah, it yeah. wasn't. It, but it said it at the last statement. However, <laughs> uh -oh. it cannot be proven to be true. Uh, that was their synopsis. Mm. So it was interesting. But you know, if I, I don't know if you th if you. But I thought, well, okay. if you factor in it, faith, Zach, that's actually probably a true statement. It, 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 it didn't bother me what was written. I thought, okay, because they laid out how people trust it. They make uh, life-changing choices from it. Yep. It is uh, revered. It is acknowledged. It's the greatest selling book. I mean, they had all the positives there, but the question yep. is, is the Bible true? And they're like, it cannot be proven to be true. Hmm. That was there. So a duck that lives in a tree, they have no explanation. How did that, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that, I mean, depends on what you mean by proof, but I mean, we have ample evidence to believe the Bible is true. It's not incoherent. It's not logically inconsistent. It's not, you know, anti-historical. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I don't know if that's the, in fact, I think there's a ton of great evidence um, to believe in the Bible, even extra biblical evidence, um, you know, like natural theology, apologetics. But, but I will say this, that, I go back to what we said earlier about the kingdom. I don't think you can see the beauty of the kingdom unless it's supernaturally revealed to you from the spirit. You're not, you're not going to see these things as, as divine unless God opens your mind. It's going to, I mean, the Bible says it, it, it would be foolishness to the, to the Greeks, you know, to the, it's, it, it's not, it, it's not going to seem, you're not going to see what it is. Um, it, and so I think that, or is it what foolishness? What is it? Uh, one to the Jews, one to the Greeks. What's that passage? Hold on a second. Where's that? First Corinthians. First Corinthians one. Oh, right, here you go. For the Jews, uh, yeah, it says for the Jews demand signs, and the Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jew, 
Jews and folly to the Gentiles. So I think that it has to be, you know, revealed to you. But I don't. But it is certainly there. Are, there. I mean, uh, the Bible is written in propositional truths, so that you it is testable. I mean, uh, it's not. It's not a leap. Faith is not a leap into the unknown with your fingers crossed, jumping off of a building, hoping that someone catches you with no reason to believe that they would. That's not faith. Faith is. I mean, there's a ton of reason to believe when you jump, you know, that, that you will be caught. And you make a good point because whenever Abraham was there with his son Isaac and was told to sacrifice him, we know from the Bible itself that he reasoned, according to the Hebrew writer, to the resurrection. So would you say, was it a leap of faith to do what God told him? Well, it was more an idea that he reasoned that since he believed God, that God would raise him from the dead. And and that's in Hebrews 11, which is where the New Testament really gives us a, under, a biblical definition of faith. So that's that that what you just mentioned is is one of the many instances in the, the Hebrew writer that he uses to give us uh, kind of a, a, a tangible expression of what faith really is. It's, it is a it is knowable. God is knowable. The Bible's knowable. Well, he it's is. True. But I'm saying here's Peter, who was with Jesus, looking at him eye to eye. He says in twenty two thirty three, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. I, I guarantee you in that moment, if you would have asked him, he was like, I'm 100% in. convinced that this is true. Look, 20 verses later. <laughs> Until I'm not. 20 <laughs> verses later. I mean, he's got the sword. He's cutting a guy's ear off, which I'm yeah. assuming is pretty hard to do. Now, maybe he was aiming for the it head. I think he sharp, was sharp, and it had to be hit just right. <laughs> I think he Feels was aiming fun. for the head, and the guy turns his head. It's a glance and blow, takes that ear off. Maybe so. And Bad aim. So Jesus says in 52 to the uh, chief priests, the officers, and the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him, am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? And I'm sure they were thinking, well, one of your dudes just cut off an ear. Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness reigns, which gives yeah, a little window into the evil forces right. that that Jesus was up against, that, that he yeah. was going to destroy. And I and, think it was also, Jay's a little tip that I'm allowing you to do this. I mean, in other words, okay. I was in those temple courts. You never made a move on me, but I'm out here not on accident. Yeah, what about your time? Or, I'm going to allow this. Yeah, That's right. And, and I, I, and I just can imagine when he says that, that Peter and the guys, when he says that, that I come leading a rebellion, I, I can imagine those guys been in the back going, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what we're doing. I thought what, that's what, what we were doing. What do you think we've been up to? That's, <laughs> that's what, what we yeah, brought to swords. Exactly. Yeah, tell well, them, Jesus. Tell them what we're doing. And, and my point is, not not to even mention side point about him bringing up his speeches that he gave in the temple courts, because you remember what were those all about? Him saying, look, this temple's going to be destroyed, which sounds crazy to everyone listening and him being the temple, John chapter two, that would die and come back three days later talking about his body. But so you get to 54, 20 verses after Peter is pretty sure. And then he proved it by getting out the sword in 54, then seizing him. They led him away, took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. Uh oh, he's he's waning. Leaking oil here. Because <laughs> you gotta remember, thirty-three, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. But by following at a distance, you're seeing that maybe he's starting to question that. So when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him. Now, one of the other accounts uh, shares that, like, Jesus, he can see Jesus also. Yeah, he's, like, standing in a court. court. But she had these courtyards where it was open, so probably they hadn't taken Jesus in. He's probably standing up there. But he he, he's, he can see him. They can make eye contact. So in that, well, we can find that. Real quick, the parallel passage in Matthew. It. But it says, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else 
saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. And some of the other translations says he, you know, calling down curses on himself. Yep. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. And just as he was speaking, he heard a rooster crow. Oh, this is it, Al. I'm here in 61. Oh, yeah. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Whoa. Mm. Then Peter remembered. That had to be crushing. You oh, know. Yeah. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. And in an ironic twist, we were talking about this artificial intelligence earlier and you know whether this is true and whether jesus is true but in an ironic it you know twist if you put all these passages together you remember in luke 5 when we read about the miraculous catch where he said put out deeper water and remember peter was like verse this is a 5 5 of luke master we've worked all night and haven't caught anything but because you say so, I'll let down the nets. And I'm sure it was sarcastic, frustrating. Man. We we've shared about when we were there. We're commercial fishermen. The last thing you want to do to a bunch of commercial fishermen is go tell them where to fish because we know everything, right, Phil? <laughs> so Simon said, you know, he says that when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And when Peter saw this, this is interesting. He fell at Jesus's knees and said, go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Now, in that moment, he realized this is really God. Now, you fast forward to here and you're like, well, what happened? How come you didn't trust him here? So what's interesting when you read John 20, and I'm skipping ahead because I feel like it's so important. You have the same type of miracle after Jesus was resurrected. And in chapter 21, I'm sorry. Now, Jesus is, he's dead now. And they're like, it's over. And Jesus appeared to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And it happened this way. First guy on the list, Simon Peter. All of them were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. I mean, let's get back to fishing. We'll go with you. So they went out and got in the boat, but they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. The disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out, friends, haven't you any fish? No. Throw your nets on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to, to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Took him back, he, he took him back to his first name. Pull your mic up a little bit, Dad. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved, John, said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon, Peter heard him say, now you remember what happened last time? He said, go away from me, I'm a sinful man. But as soon as Simon, Peter heard him say it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, jumped into the water, and the other disciples followed in the boat. I mean, he's just like, you talk about a viral moment. He's windmilling, swimming to get to Jesus, and they're following him in the boat. I think that's funny. He's towing the net full of fish. Yep, and there's yeah, 153. You, you, did, you didn't want to leave the fish, but hang on, Jace. Let's take a look. And by the way, you say, how do you know this Bible's true? I know, because who else in the world would tell some legend story and they, they have him taken off his outer garment. There's 153 fish. I mean, he's swimming in front yeah. of the boat. Well, where are we getting all these details? This, this seems like someone is was there and they saw it. That's right. And, and all these stories do. And look what happened. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said, Let, bring some of those fish. Let's have breakfast. Verse 11 and 12. But my point is, here is Peter staring at this fire, thinking it's over back in Luke 20, 22. 
and he denies him three times after he said he wasn't. You fast forward, we're back to a fire. And instead of staring at that fire, because, you know, fire has a way. It's a mesmerizing of, yeah, quality. Yeah, we, we, and look, I spent an hour looking up why people stare at fires. If you want to do something for fun, that is <laughs> awesome. Because I just thought, you know, maybe there's a spiritual application. The only one I could really find that, you know, people say, well, matter can't be created or destroyed. So they're like, that, that. The, the the triangle of fire, you know, heat, fuel, and oxygen, it's really not burning up because fire can't be destroyed. It's being transformed. But I like that line. And this was it didn't come from a Christian person. It was just a line trying to describe fire. And I thought, ooh, I like that. Yeah. Because that's what made me think that he was staring at the fire, denying him. You know, just because he's mesmerized, he was stressed out saying he's not, I don't think he is who he said he was, even though he saw all those miracles in the moment when it was going to cost him his life, even though he said he would go to prison and, and he would die with him, he denied him three times. And to catch that many fish when he put out the net. And now he's staring at a fire field, but look, I guarantee he wasn't looking at that fire. You know what he was looking at? He was looking at the guy who was dead sitting across the fire, and then Jesus in that moment, of all moments, you see the the different response of Peter in Luke 5, when he wasn't sure, he said, go away from me, I'm a sinful man. Because the fact is, when you meet the real God of heaven and earth, it's terrifying, because you realize you're sinful. But here, post-resurrection, he realized Oh, he is God. And and Jesus asked him three times if he loved him. Has to be the same three questions in, in referral to Peter denying him. You know what I find amazing? No, Jesus said, come on, let's have some breakfast. They caught 153. You got somebody telling a story, and he knew exactly how many fish someone else caught. But not even, but, but but so many, the net was not torn. They made those nets. They, 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 it's it's like trammel nets, you know, that we buy now. Which is like a ten foot wall of of ten webbing. Foot wall. None of the disciples, that they're sitting there looking at the fish now. It's, none of them ask ask him, "Who are you?" None of them ask him that. Yeah. It says. They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took bread with them. But none of them said, well, who in the tarnation are you? Right. Where'd you come from? You know what it I was find? So, uh, it was so shocking yeah. that they said, I'm scared of him. I'm, I mean, I am. Well, that's they, what they I was going to say, Phil. When you meet the real God and you say, hey, you know this is true, it is terrifying at first. Yep. Because you realize you're sinful and there's a God and you're not him. You start looking at you're perishable, you're sinful, you can't make up for your past wrongs. Catching a load of fish is not you, that easy. You really don't know what you're doing here on the earth. All these things, it is terrifying. But when you come to a close encounter with Jesus, whether it's through faith in reading this or actually being Peter there, it transformed him. I mean, yep. and it, it takes you back. What I think the subtle thing we don't realize in Luke 22 here is, is when Peter made his prediction, when he said, Lord, in verse 33, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. No, he wasn't. But Jesus had also just made a prediction. In 31 and 32, he said, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Well, who was right? Jesus's prediction came true because mm -hmm. then remember what he said after the three questions of I love you. Then he then commissioned him to feed the sheep. Yeah. And it's also shows you there's a difference in your faith faltering versus your faith failing. Exactly. Because his faith faltered, but he did not fail because he came back. And I told you that was the difference between him and Judas. Judas failed. You know, he didn't. He didn't come back. If he'd have just waited around for three days, but he didn't. He went. Which is interesting. The the thing that Peter said he would do that he did not do at the denial of Jesus 
then was the thing that Jesus in the end said that you will do. That's right. You're going to go where you don't want to go. And he did stretched out and, and he, he did. still and, loved it. I mean, that shows you. And look, here's what I wanted to say before we go to overtime. The reason that God chose 12 disciples and he went and had these one-on-one encounters throughout his all ministry is because it's a mirror image of what we have in the church. You, you get to know Jesus better through seeing Jesus operate in other people. You would never yeah. fully understand who Jesus is unless you see, because everybody's personality is different. Everybody makes different mistakes. Yep. Everybody bounces back in different ways. It's the same Jesus. That's why we have to stick together. Being off by yourself will never work. That's right. It takes Christians for you to know Jesus. It takes Jesus to know other Christians. It's vice versa. But that's really how it works. Yep. And yep. even Judas, because I've racked my brain over and That's over. So why did he? Too, yeah, I thought, why did he pick Judas knowing he, and I think that's a the $10 million question. Why did he pick Jesus? Even though he knew he was going to betray him. But it just shows you, even in our church today, you see people still who have every reason in the world to never betray Jesus, and they still do. That's right. And it's something we deal with, and it's something you learn from. Yep. And you also see people you never thought would, would make it and be strong, and they are one day. I mean, Peter's the last person you would ever think be a leader in, in the right. church. The leader. That's I mean, right. the main guy. He crucified upside down and write a couple letters that would be I had the keys of, to the king. Exactly right. Unlocked it with the first sermon. God's grace is deeper and than imaginable. It's beautiful. All right, we're out of time. So uh, we're going to head over to... Uh, <clears throat> We're going to head over to Overtime and uh, see about wrapping this up. If you want to follow us over, it's blazetv.com slash unashamed. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.